Now in today's video we're going to be taking a look at this graphics card. This is a card that I recently posted a picture of to most of my followers asking them what they thought it was. And to be honest most people got it wrong. This is not a graphics card from Nvidia. This is actually an older graphics card from AMD. And of course we're going to see if we can still game on it. So to put everyone's minds at rest, this is actually the AMD Radeon R9 390 and I recently picked it up from eBay for around £40. That isn't actually too bad for pretty much any graphics card, although I wouldn't go out and buy one nowadays because these are generally just too old. I've actually wanted a card of this design for a while now because everybody that I speak to rave about how good they are. I wasn't really that keen on them from pictures. I've never actually owned one of this design before. It is of course from MSI and just seeing them in pictures didn't really do it for me, particularly because of the red accents on it. I, I suppose in a way it could look pretty good in a red and black themed build, but I generally think that if you do put a color on a graphics card, it's really hard to actually match it in with lots of different things. But since actually having it, I have been pretty impressed. This card is a very chunky card indeed. And I can imagine if you actually purchased one of these back in the day, you'd have been pretty impressed with your purchase. It is a pretty big card. It has a very nice backplate on there. That is a metal or aluminium backplate. So at least it does contribute to some of the cooling. We have pretty much all the ports that you need from a DP connection, a HDMI connection and two DVIs, which generally nobody uses anymore. The cooling solution on this is extremely good. We have these near 120 millimeter fans I'm not really quite sure exactly what size they are, probably about 100 millimeter fans that actually blow down onto a pretty thick, hefty cooler. And generally, while testing this, I had no temperature issues at all, even though the R9 series generally are well known for getting pretty warm. This one actually didn't. This one performed exceptionally well when it came to cooling. And I can only really put that down to the cooling solution MSI used. As well as all of this kind of stuff, it does have a nice little MSI logo in the front here, which does light up in your case. So that looks pretty cool when it's uh, all on and running. And when it comes to power connections, it takes an 8-pin connection as well as a 6-pin. I did expect it to actually come with two 8-pins because I have had things like the R9 290s in the past and they generally come with two 8s, I believe. So I was a little bit shocked about that, but if it didn't come with two 8-pins, it obviously doesn't need them. Now, aside from the looks of this card, we do have some pretty impressive specs for particularly when it was actually released. It is sitting on the Granada GPU with a base clock speed of 1000 megahertz. It comes with 2,560 shaders and a whopping 8 gigabytes of GDDR5 memory. That is actually pretty impressive back from its day because not many cards actually had 8 gigabytes of VRAM. It was pretty much AMD leading the way there. For the memory bus, we have a pretty big 512 bit. That is actually pretty good and will actually help this card live a little bit longer. For the interface, it is a PCI Gen 3 by 16, which is pretty standard for its day. And then when it comes to power consumption, it runs at around 275 watts. Again, that is pretty hefty really, but it's nothing in consideration compared to the flagship cards of today. It was released in 2015, which now makes the card around nine years old. So it is getting on a little bit. And it was originally released for around $329. Now for its time, that was a pretty hefty price to pay, but you were getting a lot for your money back then, considering this was AMD's ultra enthusiastic flagship card and it cost you less than 400 pounds. Everybody pretty much had a great time gaming back then. Now the card is getting on a little bit. Like I say, it's about nine years old now. And unfortunately, AMD have dropped the drivers on these. There are no new driver updates for these. They generally only have anything that's real security stuff that AMD have to kind of drop. But aside from that, there's no game ready drivers on this. You're gonna get no enhancements in any kind of DirectX or anything like that. You're pretty much stuck with what you've got, although they do support and they will actually play with things like AMD FSR, which you'll probably need if you are going to play anything modern. But when it comes to actually gaming, if you're looking at this card for the latest titles like Robocop, Starfield or even The Last of Us, I'm afraid you're out of luck. None of these games will run on it simply because they're just not supported, mainly due to the lack of updated drivers. And it's a real shame because with its 8GB VRAM and features like FSR now being available, Many other games, even more demanding ones, run like a dream on it. Games like Cyberpunk 2077, a title that once pushed the limits of hardware, was hardly playable on an R9 390, but thanks to a number of updates, it now runs surprisingly well with older graphics cards just like this one. Don't get your hopes up for a 4K full ray tracing experience though, that's simply not on the cards for this setup. However, running the game at 1080p with a low preset and enabling FSR 2.1 with a balanced setting makes for a surprisingly playable experience. With this configuration, we managed to see an average of 60 frames per second and a commendable 1% low of 52. This smooth 60 FPS experience caught me off guard 
especially considering the low settings, but needless to say, it is still looking very good and was a pleasant surprise indeed. Next up is Dead Island 2, a personal favourite of mine from 2003 and a game that launched with fantastic optimization, which worked wonders for older hardware like the trusty R9390 and nothing changes here. By sticking to a 1080p resolution and dialing down the game's quality to a medium setting, you can easily enjoy a 60fps experience with an average of 72 frames per second and a 1% low of 36. Not only is the gameplay smooth, but it also looks extremely good. It's another surprising result if I'm honest because many would consider this graphics card as completely dead now, but as it can make a game like this one perfectly fine, without any help from upscaling technologies, maybe it still has a little bit of life left in it. Doom Eternal is a reasonably old game now and has always been very well optimised for most hardware, old and new, and here it gave no surprises with the R9 390, which performed exceptionally at lower resolutions. In 1080p with an ultra setting, it can get nearly 100 frames per second with a great 1% low of 61. At these settings, the game played extremely smooth and looked absolutely amazing. You could also play the game at 1440p with a high setting and still get around 60 FPS, but I found that it just didn't feel as smooth, so 1080p here is the resolution to go for. In Hogwarts Legacy, the R9 390 performs extremely well considering the challenge that this game gives even newer, more powerful graphics cards. I did expect some form of driver issues here, even maybe just a warning or two, but in fact I got nothing at all. The game started up and loaded perfectly fine, and with a little fine tuning in the settings, managed to get it to play quite well. In 1080p with a medium preset while enabling FSR 2 with a quality setting, the R9 390 managed to get a respectable 65 frames per second on average, with a pretty decent 1% low of 49. This meant that the game was more than playable and quite smooth as well, although when enabling FSR in this game, even at any setting, you do lose a little bit of sharpness from the picture quality. Spider-Man Remastered has been a great example of how well the R9 390 can still play modern games though, and it really doesn't take a lot to get a great gaming experience. Running the game in 1080p with a medium preset and enabling FSR 2.1 with a quality setting, the R9 390 could achieve around 73 frames per second on average with a 1% low of 49. With this kind of performance, the game is of course more than playable and the smooth 60fps experience makes it quite enjoyable too. The last game in our testing was of course Stray, that cute little game that when released surprised a lot of people because of how good it actually is. It doesn't have the most demanding of requirements, but when running it in the highest settings, it can look exceptionally good. And for those of you currently gaming on an R9 390, you'll be glad to know that it still is more than enough. With a resolution of 1080p and a graphics preset of high, you can achieve an average FPS of 72 with a 1% low of 55, meaning not only will the game look great, but it is also extremely smooth. Overall, the R9 390 we tested here ran pretty smooth on all the games that would start, and it was generally pretty cool and quiet as well. Even without driver support, most of the games we tested ran without issue, and it performed a lot better than I thought it was going to. I was very impressed with the performance, and I am pretty sure its 8GB of VRAM had really helped it out here. So of course, it's not a card that you should probably go out and get today, particularly if you are going to be playing the super modern games. A lot of games will not run on this card simply because the drivers just will not support it, and it just simply isn't powerful enough. But for those games that do actually start and run on it, it performed exceptionally well, particularly if we use tools such as AMD's FSR, because this card actually does have the 8GB of VRAM, which even some newer cards don't come with nowadays, which is really helping this thing along, as well as coming with its pretty wide memory bus, that's really helping this card along too. I paid around £40 for this card, which wasn't too bad considering the performance that we get and the fact that it can play a lot of those games even though you do suffer a little bit on performance. But apart from that, I'm quite surprised at how well this card did and I'd be glad at paying about £40 for it, particularly because I like to play older games and if you are somebody that does that too, you'll probably be okay with a card like this anyway. And that pretty much brings us to the end of our look at the R9 390 in 2024. I will keep this card around for a while because I'm pretty sure we'll find something else to test it against or I might actually build some kind of themed MSI build because I think this card would look pretty cool in one of them. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you want to see that and I'm sure as always I'll catch you guys in the next one.